Hi Felters and welcome to the second part of my five part series of gorgeous needle felted woodland animals. So yesterday was the owl, I will link the video at the end and today we're going to do the badger. So I really hope you're enjoying this series, do ask me any questions below. Here is Mr Badger and this is who we're going to do today, let's get started. So as I said with um, Mr. Owl, they're all quite simple shapes. This badger is just a round ball and a head. It's sort of adding the black that's the only thing with a little bit of detail. So this is a really simple shape and remember you could do these without the Christmas decorations um, and just use them all year round. So we're going to just do a little centre core wool. I, you could use the grey all the way through but generally if I'm doing a needle felted ball that's um, a little bit bigger than say two and a half three inches I would probably use core wool on the inside to save on the expensive wool so this is just um, I think this is, could be a carded Coradel slither from world of wool I will list all the wools in the description below um, and I've just rolled it up very simple straightforward we're just going to put it into a ball shape and I've got my clover pen with 240 triangular needles in it I have obviously lots of videos for beginners, I have a beginner playlist, do go and have a look through. So the rough, very rough centre piece here is just over two and a quarter and I've not felted it for very long, we're going to go over it in a bit. So this is the grey I'm using, um, I can't remember which colour this one is, it's slightly different to the badger I have down at the side there, I will put the two options down, the badger down at the side I think is a squirrel colour. And I think this is a Perindale grey and I have got a massive chunk of it there because <laughs> it comes in a bat that one and maybe I thought I had a little bit too much but I've just covered the whole ball with it and it's quite a um, thick wool this one but as I felt it down it uh, is the perfect size so it's not a problem and I always said yesterday when you recreate um, you never manage to recreate things identical unless you've been practicing and practicing them. My Highland Cows, the Sleeping Highland Cows, I managed to get spot on now. So I've roughly felted this all over for about three or four minutes and it's at least two and a half is what you want it, across two and a half inches. And then now I'm going to go over and just use the clover pen and firm it up. And again, this is going to take you probably the most amount of time, at least 15, 20 minutes. These items, as I said with Mr. L, take you at least an hour and a half, I would say, with all the detail. So here you can see it's a little bit closer. I'm just firming it up. I don't need to go over this wool with a fine needle afterwards. Um, it's got quite a nice effect on it. And the clover pen with the 40s, as you can see, it gives it a, a nice finish. So let's just double check two, yeah, two and a half once it's all done. Just checking for size, you can see a slight colour difference there, I can tell. <laughs> um, I just grabbed the greys out of my bag. So next we're going to do the black. This is a Coridel Raven from World of Wool. In, it comes in slithers. And just pull off a section and you want it to be tummy size, so it's at least an inch and a half across. I'm just sizing the ball to see which way is it's landing flat. And then I'll try and keep that as the base. And if it's not working and it's not going flat, give it a squish down and it, it will sort of flatten the bottom a bit for you so that it helps with it standing up. Just whilst you're doing it, because obviously if you're going to be hanging it in a tree, it doesn't matter too much. And I'm just placing a layer of the black on. I felt uh, most of the middle area first. Don't panic about the edges. Just felt the middle bit on. This looks like quite a big layer, but it's not in the end when um, I've... Uh, felted it all down and so when you're doing the edges or trying to do a line I very gently drag the needle around the edge now these are 40 triangular so they are fine it's better if you use a, a 36 or a 32 for um, drawing lines it's much much easier but um, I'm fairly okay with these needles and I just very gently draw the wool around in the line that I want it and then felt it in. So normally when I'm doing areas like this I'll felt most of the middle and that's the neck bit so it's going to disappear under the head so that just goes tapers off into a little V and then you want the bottom of it to be round. 
So there we go, you can see it roughly and I've got quite a bit of felting it down to do. So I'm just using the clover pen first off and then I will go over it with a fine needle. Now black wool is the worst to work on because it's very hard to see. You do have to have a good light. Please, please try and get yourself in a good light to do this. Um, if anyone asks you, say you're doing commissions and they ask you to do a black cat, I did a black horse once, it was so hard and actually black's got a lot of brown in it a black animal but anyway so um, I've got to go over it next with the fine needle but it's very hard to show you the difference so you're just going to have to trust me on this one so uh, that's 40 triangular on its own and I'm just going all the way over it and just smoothing it down so it's got a nice smooth tummy it takes about maximum 10 minutes it doesn't take too long and I'm still slightly defining the edges there so there we go I've gone all the way over it, it looks a little bit better Next up, we are going to do the head, which is a tube shape. So it's quite, uh, the base of it, we're going to do white, and then we're gonna add the black on um, the sides and the ears and the eyes afterwards. Uh, you could do a black base and add the white stripe on, but I, personally, I think this lends itself to being white with added black on it. But you can change the shapes um, of these badges. You know, you don't have to do what I've done. You can look at other badges and decide where you want your colours to be. So one end is going to be the nose and one is going to be the back of the head. And already, as I roll it, I can see there's a flatter bit on the left there and it's more slopey on the right. So that's what I'm going to go with, which it quite often happens that way when you roll something up it almost lends itself to one end being slightly slopey and pointy. So this is the flat end at the back there and I'm going to uh, um, needle felt it all downwards and all the way across so we get a nice flat back of the head. And then with the front, I'm gonna keep defining it with my fingers and keep felting it at an angle. So you can see flat and that's definitely very squidgy, obviously, but it's lending itself more to be the nose. And in the end, I do extend it a tiny bit. So I'm just trying it out for size, seeing what I think. And obviously I've got to felt it down just to give you a really rough start a bit. It is actually two inch, sorry, I'm moving around in my chair, two inches in length. I need a new chair, it's really uncomfortable. I'd love someone to sponsor me for a new chair. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit more around the back of the head because I think it needs to be a bit chunkier because by the time you felt it down, um, it's obviously going to shrink down. And actually it was quite narrow, but when you add the black bits on the side, that um, makes the head a lot wider. So I'm just roughly felting it on here and I'm still sort of encouraging the nose downwards and to a point. Do ne never felt the point right backwards because until the very end because you'll lose the length so you want to encourage it down so I did add a little bit more to the nose so I took a little bit of white wool and just rolled it in my hand into a little ball and then just added it onto the nose felted it around and then to cover up the join marks I put a thin layer around it as well because there's a few <coughs> join marks showing on this so there we go I've just added on a tiny bit more because I felt that it would just disappear too much once I felted it. So there we go, and a nice thin layer there, wrap it around, just covers up any join marks. And then I add a little bit more onto the back of the head, we'll work it with the clover pen, and then we'll go over it with a fine needle. I do think it's important to do the layer of going over it with a fine needle every time. I like to get a smooth-ish finish with these items. And like I said, they don't have to be really firm, but just, you know, firm enough to hold their shape. So there we go. And then I'm going all over it with the 40 triangular. That will firm it up nicely. And all the way through the back, and then um, firm up the nose last, very last bit. So there we go, it's all done. Sometimes I leave the underneath a tiny bit fluffy to help with attaching, but you know, it doesn't have to be really fluffy. So next we're going to do the black shapes. These are actually quite easy, and the nose. So take a little bit of um, the black carded wool, and then I fold it over to get the um, edge bit that goes at the back, felt it together, and then the 
longer fluffier bits are going to tail down into the point towards the nose so you're sort of encouraging that shape straight away so you can see it forming already obviously it's a little bit too big but once we felt it down so you want it to stop short of the end of the nose you don't want it to go right down to the tip and you want a nice stripe along the top if your stripe along the top gets really uneven towards the end when you do the other one just add a bit of white on or just add a bit more black and straighten the other one up so it is possible to fiddle around with it if it doesn't go correct first time and when you're working with black and white wool together you know it shows uh, when when you try and move things so you might need to cover up afterwards with a bit of white wool so the line underneath the cheek didn't want it to go down too low and the line at the top but you want it to have enough that the eye is going to be completely in the middle of the black area so I felt it on loosely and I was just drawing slightly with the pen and like I said be very careful and then that end bit I just tucked back on itself um, and it, it sort of gives a nice because it's all carded wool it all sort of merges in nicely and then we'll do the other side and go over them with the clover pen make sure they're even and then go over them afterwards See, it's fairly similar shape doesn't have to be identical then we'll go over them and um, with a fine needle and smooth them out a bit more so that's that side looking pretty good at the back it just sort of comes to a stop there and the ears are going to go behind it so we'll have more black going down the back of the head so do the other side we are going to skip this stop the video and catch up so exactly the same fold it over place it in position and I as I said I go through the middle area first and draw the lines there we go speed it up and then that end bit just sort of tuck it in and round see the stripes appearing at the top that's the underneath and there was a little bit there we go so I check from underneath I check from the front I check from the top that it's all looking fairly even and then we go over with the fine needle on both sides but before we do that we are going to do the nose which is really simple so you take a little bit of black wool and you're going to roll it into a ball and it is actually quite a small amount of black wool too so there we go we're just neatening it up it's hard to show you it but you can, and you can see they're a little bit chunkier as well so a little bit of black wool roll it between your fingers and then start felting it together you can literally not hold it and put it on the mat this is where you start to poke yourself if you end up having to hold these things so you can roll it around on the mat just to bring it together and then put it between your hands and when you put it between your hands you start the felting process um, by bringing it together even more so I definitely recommend doing this when you're trying to do little tiny uh, things like this and then hold it on where you want it to be right on the tip and right at the bottom of the points and you felt the back of the nose the back of the ball don't felt right into the middle straight away because you'll squish your nose and it'll come flat and it'll look a bit odd so you want it to look a little bit ball shape so go all around the base felt it on and then have a look at it and see if it's sticking out a little bit too much and then you can felt through the middle and get it exactly because that is sticking out a little bit too much that one the uh, other badger nose I did was better and then you can gently felt through and it's definitely attached as well so there we go so the nose super easy and then we're going to go on to the eyes so there's the shape starting to come together and look like a badger so next up the eyes are these are tiny eyes three mil eyes if you end up doing your eyes bigger uh, doing your baubles bigger then make sure your eyes are a little bit bigger so I take my um, owl and create a hole you can use an end of a pair of scissors put the eye in check it's okay I tend to do the other one notice that I'm positioning the um, owl backwards slightly on both sides because I don't want the eye posts meeting in the middle 
um, because then the eye won't go in that well. So I sort of angle them backwards a bit and check the other eye is level. Look from the top, look from the front, and then I get a tiny bit. This is just a Bostic all-purpose glue. Take the owl out, put the eye in. Do the same with the other one. I had a bit too much glue on that one. Um, and then we're going to put some white over the top of the eye. Now, my family and I disputed this. I really like the white on the eye because it shows the eye, but they said the badger doesn't need it. <laughs> so it's completely down to you whether you want to do this, whether you want to do the white going under the eye as well. I just put a little bit of eyebrow on the top to give it a bit of eye definition. I, I think it looks good. But um, yeah, it's completely up to you. I don't think badgers have white on their eyes. And then do the other one. And this is a tiny little bit of white. Roll it between your fingers a little bit and then um, gently felt it in. Any loose stray hairs, just cut off with a pair of scissors. Don't, as I always say, spend hours trying to get them because you'll probably felt the white too much. You don't want to over felt the fine details. It'll trim them off, blow as you trim them off and they should not land on your black. And we're going to attach the head. So you want the head to be middle forwards. You don't want it to be sitting too far behind and it might make it topple a bit if you want it just standing up. But because it's going to be a bauble, it's fine. So if you do want them standing up, you could just give them little front legs or something. That would be quite sweet. You could give them back legs as well, so you can adapt and change these. So you're just going to felt all through the very base. I tend to go downwards. Sometimes with some animals, I'll hold them upside down. But with this one, because of the black and the white and everything, I felt downwards. I've even got the clover pen out um, and just give it a little bit. See, it's wonky there. You just need to straighten him up a bit. Check him as you're doing him. Don't just do it and then look and go, oh, he's wonky. Um, so there we go, nice and secure, it doesn't need much to secure it. So we're going to do the little ears and they're going to be black base, so quite small, again really quite small um, and for these ones I'm going to fold over the wool. Normally I twist it around but I think because I wanted them a little bit wider so I folded them over and then felt them flat and just push the two corners in a bit and they really don't take long to form at all. Felt them through, turn over, felt through, turn over. Always keep lifting off your mat. People always say, oh, it sticks to my mat. It sticks, wool sticks to nearly every mat. So you do have to be very careful. Don't felt too deeply and turn an awful lot. But wool does stick to some of the foam mats worse. So this is the second ear. And then we're gonna take a tiny bit of white Felt it together on your mat and then peel it off. Try and make it a little bit circular. And then when we put it on the ear, you're going to have to be really, really careful not to stab through because the white will go through onto the back of the ear. So I've got the 40 spiral, very gentle taps. Keep checking. I'm lining the top of it so it sort of goes around in a bit of a neater curve. And then just to show you when I do the second one, I literally, it's not coming through, so that's good. I literally felt like that at an angle that's so shallow that you're not pushing the wool straight through, you're pushing it sort of down a bit. And very gently felt them on. Cut off the strays. We're nearly done. This is the ears, nearly finished. So play around with positioning. You wouldn't want them too high up, it looks a bit silly. I think I did mine differently to the other ones. I made the other ones a bit smaller, I think. So these weren't as good, but not too bad. Um, so I felt all around the back. See how the line goes down and you've still got that stripe. I want to keep that white stripe around the back. So I felt down the line, attaching the ears, that line there. And then I'm going to drag the black wool and continue the line down and just merge it into the body. So you can do sort of V points. I think I did V points and the other one with this one, I just sort of uh, did it down into the neck and then do the same on the other side. I didn't sort of fold these ears in half or anything like that because I don't think it looked right. So that's one ear, attach the other one. There we go. Now we're going to do the tail. 
um, and it's really fluffy. Keep the wool nice and fluffy. So take your grey wool and very just do a couple of gentle pokes to just pull the wool together, not to define it, to just get it holding together. And you want it to be at least three inches long, I would say. And it's going to go from the middle of the back around to the front. So I've just very gently, that's all I've done. And then that's how I'm going to do it at the very bottom. So it helps stabilize the badger. So if you see, I've flipped the tail around and I'm going to felt a tiny bit in there. And then I'm going to fold that back and around. So you get a nice start to the tail. So just felt that in and then flip it round. And then I like to just twist the end of the tail quite often. I just think that brings it to a nicer sort of point downwards. I'm going to do the squirrel. That's going to be fun. It's got a big bushy tail. Looking forward to that. I hope if anyone is doing some of these that they're going to be keeping up with me. I'm going to be releasing them every couple of days. And then felt above and below the tail so that you don't squish all that air out of it. And that is the tail. So with the other one I had, I ordered these little, I don't know, cherry sticks. I don't know what you call them online, but I had to push the wire through it. They were actually quite difficult to attach. So I probably would make these red balls and you could even uh, make a little green leaf. That would be quite nice to go with them. So it'd really look like holly. Um, but roll the red, get three the same size um, at the beginning, roll them in your hands and then gently felt them together. Mind your fingers. <laughs> I said that earlier. This is how you hurt your fingers. And then once you've felted it all together, then roll it between your hands again. And then you're going to attach it like you did with the nose. You go all the way around the back and I'm using um, a 40 spiral here, nice fine needle and go all the way around the back of it get it attached and then shape the ball a little bit around the front if needed. And then repeat that with the other ones. So nice and simple. This is scarlet wool from World of Wool. Great red colour. And I did these in a slightly different position, different shape. But I think that works well and it looks nice and Christmassy. And again, don't felt through the middle of the ball. And then last thing, we're just going to attach the gold thread. I have a needle that's got a really wide eyelet. You could even put ribbon through these, I think. Um, and I did a beading wire on this uh, owl just to show you a different one. Just pop it through and it's sort of middle of the ball, not middle of the head, because obviously you want it to hang down and make sure it's level across so it's nice and straight. Tie it in a simple knot. And I, yeah, I'm definitely preferring the gold for these once they're all finished. I think I might get a shot of them all with the gold ties when I finish them all. And just tie a little knot, cut the end off, and you are done. So that's Mr. Badger. Second of your woodland animals all complete. Mr. Al, there's the two. And tomorrow is going to be Miss Squirrel with her big fluffy tail. And I don't know how we're going to have to recreate that <laughs> spiral thing. I know Living Felt did a video on it. So there we go. So hopefully you'll join me for Miss Squirrel tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon.